once again what's up 23 percent nation this is your man coach d ladies and gentlemen today i'm bringing you fruit of the day the one and only lemon so maybe you prefer a little bit of lemon in your water maybe you like to peel and eat the lemon as if it were an orange or maybe just maybe you enjoy lemonade well, whatever the case may be, please listen and watch on. Why? Because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of the lemon. All right. First up, a little bit of background information. Although it's unclear where lemons actually originated from, it's believed that they are native to India, China or Burma. Nice. <laughs> and all this time, I thought lemons were native to Florida guess I was wrong. Also, scientist Lynn, James Lind is credited with conducting experiments on board a naval ship in 1747 and demonstrating that lemon nutrition could help ward off scurvy. Now, for those of us who don't know anything about scurvy, unfortunately, it was a debilitating condition that affected a lot of British soldiers as they sail from Europe over to the US. Now, the unfortunate symptoms were bleeding gums and easy bruising, which unfortunately led to death. Now, the primary reason for scurvy is because a lot of the sailors were suffering from a vitamin C deficiency. Well, James Lynn saw a need, of course, to keep <laughs> his fellow soldiers alive. So he started playing around with uh, the uh, vitamin C located in, uh, in limes and different uh, other lemons and limes and other citrus fruits. So he was able to not only detect a problem, but find the solution. After all, isn't that what life's about? So there you have it, guys. A little bit of background information about the one and only lemon. All right, now it's time for a few fun facts. Lemons can be used outside of the kitchen. They can be added to laundry to whiten and brighten clothing, used as a natural household cleaner and polish, or even applied to the hair to add extra shine. Interesting. Also, you can try adding a few drops of lemon essential oil to your laundry or diffuser for a fresh scent. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to add a fresh scent to your laundry or maybe even do some cleaning around the house, don't forget about the good old lemons. All right, now it's time for a few not so fun facts. Citrus fruit allergies are uncommon, but they have been reported and can cause food allergy symptom, symptoms like hives, swelling, asthma, and flushed skin. Hmm, not so good. Because of the citric acid found in lemons, eating too many can cause the enamel on your teeth to erode, resulting in increased sensitivity. Finally, applying lemon directly to your skin can increase sensitivity to UV rays. So be sure to wear sunscreen or keep sun exposure in moderation to avoid a sunburn. So there we have it, guys. The not so fun facts about lemons. All right, now it's time to dive into the 520 rule, which basically is all about food labels. Yes, guys, the 520 rule is ultimately a guide. It's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, when we talk about the 520 rule, ultimately we're talking about percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now let's take a quick look at our sample food label. As you can see, it's basically divided into three parts. Part one is highlighted in lavender. That's a percent daily value column represented by, by percentages. Some are high, some are low. The second part is highlighted in yellow, which basically uh, identifies a few nutrients which do not necessarily do the body a whole lot of good. As a matter of fact, it promotes disease within the body temple. So now we're talking about total fat, trans fat, 
saturated fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Now, if anything, because these nutrients do a really good job at promoting disease within the human body, you always want to make sure that these nutrients are on the lower end of the 520 rule scale. And lastly, we have the nutrients that are highlighted in light blue. We have dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron, which basically represent all vitamins and minerals. Now, these nutrients do just the opposite of the yellow nutrients. Rather than promote disease, they promote health and wellness within the body. So if anything, you want to make sure that these nutrients are on the higher end of the 520 rule scale. So now let's dive into a few specifics. If a food item offers anywhere from 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food item is not a good source of that nutrient. Second, if the food item offers 10% to 19% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food item is considered a good source of that nutrient. Lastly, if the food item offers 20% DV or greater, then the food item is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about the 520 rule. Okay, now let's dive into a few nutrition facts. So for today's lecture, we're going to simply say that a single serving of lemon is equivalent to one lemon without the peel. All right. So this single serving is only going to give us 24 calories, 7.8 grams of carbs, 0.9 grams of protein, 0.3 grams of fat and 2.4 grams of dietary fiber. Now, when it comes to the vitamins and minerals, well, look at this vitamin C. We're going to get 74% DV. That's right. So what that simply means is that this single serving of lemon is an excellent source of vitamin C. Why? Because it's greater than 20% DV. Next up is potassium only coming in at 3% DV. So unfortunately, a lemon is not a good source of potassium. Then we have iron coming in at only 3% DV. Once again, if it's between 0% and 9%, then it is not a good source of iron. And lastly is vitamin B6, which only comes in at a lowly 3% DV. So unfortunately, a single serving of lemon <laughs> is not a good source of vitamin B6. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the nutrition facts of lemons. All right, now that we understand the, the nutrition facts, Let's now dive into the health benefits. But before we do, we got to understand the relationship between the nutrition facts and the health benefits. So at this time, I very want to I want to quickly talk with you about the principle of cause and effect, which is one of the seven hermetic principles. And it basically states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. Now, that being stated, here's what you got to understand is that the nutrition facts are the causes and the health benefits are the effects. So what does all this mean? It simply means that when you eat lemons, this is what happens. Number one, lemons enhance immunity. Now, if you don't think that's important, well, you just wait until you get a cold. <laughs> then you'll understand how important it is to have a strong immune system. Next up, lemons promote heart health. Very nice. They also help to fight cancer. Now, as stated in all of my previous videos, I always try to discuss the phytonutrients that are located in all plant foods. Now, unfortunately, phytonutrients don't get a lot of press. They don't get a lot of notoriety, but they definitely do the body some good. So the question is, which two phytonutrients in lemons help to fight cancer? Well, I want you to say hello to two of them. The first one is hesperidin, and the second one is D-limonene. So there you have it, guys. Two phytonutrients that help fight cancer found in lemons. 
Also, they prevent kidney stones. Now, the question is, which phytonutrient in lemons help to fight kidney stones? Well, say hello to citric acid. Also, lemons increase iron absorption. Now, this is especially true for anybody who suffers from iron deficiency anemia. So, guys, it's very simple. Just eat more lemons or lemon juice. <laughs> also, lemons improve skin health, right? So for anybody out there that's affected with eczema or maybe you have bad acne, it's easy. Eat more lemons. And lastly, lemons boost weight loss. So to my obese and overweight friends that are out there, guys, if you're looking to lose a little bit of weight, you want to shed a few pounds, you want to lose a few inches, it's easy. Eat more lemons. So there we have, guys, a few health benefits from the one and only lemon. Now, I wanted to include a separate slide to talk about the difference and the similarities between lemons and limes. So here we go. Lemon versus limes. Who wins? First, let's discuss the similarities. They both are citrus fruits. They both have a sour and tart flavor and they can be used interchangeably in drinks and recipes. So what does that mean? Well, if the recipe calls for a lemon, believe it or not, you can substitute it with a lime. And if the recipe requires a lime, well, you can substitute it with a lemon, right? Don't overcomplicate yourself. Now let's go into the differences. Limes are bright green while lemons are a vibrant yellow. Limes are typically slightly smaller than lemons, and lastly, lemons contain almost twice as much vitamin C, slightly less carbs, and more protein per gram. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Who wins, limes versus lemons? You let me know in the comment section below. All right, now it's time to talk about food. Yes, plant foods. As a matter of fact, it's now time for us to go to our website for everything vegan. Say hello to ForksOverKnives.com. By the way, I highly suggest you watch the movie Forks Over Knives. So as usual, I went to the website, ForksOverKnives.com, did just a little bit of research, and look at what I found. Two amazing vegan lemon recipes that I want to share with you right now. So the first one is Chewy Lemon Oatmeal Cookies. Take a look at the picture. Looks amazing. The second Recipe is mint lemonade chickpea salad. Take a look at that picture. Looks amazing. Yes. Now, if you are inclined to make and taste either one of these dishes, all you have to do is click on the description box. I am providing you a direct link to each recipe. Now, if you decide to visit the website, here's what you're going to find. You're going to find an ingredient list, the instructions and the preparation time. So there you have it, guys. Not one, but two amazing vegan lemon recipes from ForksOverKnives.com. All right, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, Coach D, thanks for the recipes. Thanks for the fun facts as well as the not so fun facts. But what I really want to know is, when should I eat more lemons? Well, guys, it's simple. The perfect day, and I do mean the perfect day to eat more lemons, is Nature Day. What? Nature Day? Yes, Nature Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day is the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, maybe you know nothing about the challenge. Well, in a nutshell, the 23% challenge is a monthly seven-day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, as well as your relationships. Oh, and by the way, it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, here's the interesting part about the 23% challenge is that it is the first seven days of every single month. The first all the way through the seventh. Now, here's the, the more interesting part is that Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, which simply means Nature Day is the first day of every single month. So whether it's January 1st, March 1st, or even December 1st, it's always Nature Day. Now, 
Perhaps you are intrigued. Perhaps you want to participate in Nature Day, but you don't quite know what to do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's a little more information. Nature Day is all about getting closer to nature. Now, yes, there are lots of things you can do to get closer to nature. For instance, you can go take a swim in a lake, a pond, or an ocean. Why not? You can go pet a pet. You can go adopt a pet. You can even take a nature walk, right? But for the sake of the challenge, we're going to get closer to nature by simply eating it. That's right, guys. It's time to eat what nature provides. In other words, eat more plants. So perhaps you're the type of person that's considering transitioning from a carnivorous diet to a whole food plant based diet. Or maybe you're the type of person who is looking to lose a little bit of weight. Or maybe you're looking to cure yourself naturally from heart disease, diabetes and cancer. Well, if that's you, then today I want to offer you three avenues that I firmly believe can really, really help you overcome whatever obstacles are in your way. So first, I want to talk with you about becoming a 3% vegan. Now, a 3% vegan is anyone, man, woman or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. Now, secondly, is a 13% vegan who is anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only four days out of an entire month. Now, if this interests you, then there are two ways in which you can go about it. You could do the first four days of the month, which basically means you're participating in a 23% challenge, or providing the month has four weeks in it, you could do one day per week. I'll leave it up to you. Now, the third option really describes Coach D, right? I consider myself to be a 23% vegan. So what does that mean? It simply means that for the first seven days of every single month, I am a strict vegan, meaning I only eat from the five food groups of plant foods. And they are all fruits, all vegetables and herbs, all nuts and seeds, all whole grains, and we cannot forget about all legumes, meaning beans and peas. And of course, I only drink water. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the ins and outs about Nature Day. All right. Now, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, thanks for the information about Nature Day. But I'm still a little confused. I need more information. Well, if that's you, I want to now offer you a few tips to help make your Nature Day successful. So tip number one is to go visit your local grocery store. Now, when you go, here's what you're going to do. You're going to hang out in two places. The first place is going to be the produce section. Why? Because that's where all of your fresh plant foods are located. And then the second place that you're going to go to is the freezer aisle. Why? Because that's where the frozen plant foods are located. Now, some of us may be questioning, are frozen plant foods as nutritious as fresh plant foods? Well, believe it or not, the nutrition contents are comparable. Secondly, go visit a local farmer's market. That's right, guys, especially for those of us who love organic plant foods, farmers markets are definitely the place to be. Now, there are some advantages to shopping at a farmers market versus a grocery store. Number one, as I just mentioned, if you're looking for organic plant foods, then farmers markets are amazing. Why? Because depending on the farmers market, they only allow organic produce. Also, because the food is grown locally, that reduces the transportation time, which also means fewer chemicals, fewer pesticides, and fewer herbicides. My, my third tip is to go visit the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. So after you finish visiting the produce section and the freezer aisle, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now, depending on the grocery store, they may term it the kitchen, 
whether it's called the kitchen or the prepared dishes section, it doesn't matter. Just have a quick conversation with the person behind the counter and ask them if they have any vegan, not vegetarian, but vegan options. If they do, ask for a quick taste sample. They'll give it to you for free, of course. Now, providing you like it, go ahead and purchase it by the pound or maybe even two pounds if you really, really find it delicious. And my fourth tip is to go visit a vegan restaurant. That's right, guys. It's time for us to, <clears throat> to promote and support the wellness community, right? Now, if you don't know where vegan restaurants are, all you have to do is go to Google, type in vegan restaurants near me, and within less than half of a second, Google will give you your desired results. Now, if you decide to go, do two things. Number one, let them know that Coach sent you. And number two, be sure to order something with lemons in it. So there you have it, guys. Four amazing tips to help make your nature day successful. All right, it's time for our question of the day, which comes from yours truly and the rest of the 22% nation. Why? Because we have inquiring minds. So we want to know which scientist is credited with conducting experiments on board a naval ship in 1747 to demonstrate that lemons could help ward off scurvy. Now, I believe I covered this information earlier in the video. So if you care to answer the question, then go ahead and write it in the comment box below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign off, I got to ask you to please subscribe, like, and share the video. And also, don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. As always, take care, God bless, and never ever forget that Coach D loves you.